message coming across, if we're going to preach on Easter Sunday, what should and what must the message be? The resurrection. The resurrection. It's got to be the resurrection. But if you look in your bulletin, the, that, that the title of the sermon this morning is Receiving the Resurrected Life. Receiving the Resurrected Life. Many people have stopped short with the comment, with the understanding, with the mental agreement with the understanding that Christ has risen. He's risen from the dead. Okay. Good. That's great. That's the truth. That's what I was brought up with. That's the tradition. That's what the Bible says. That's what mom says. That's what dad says. That's what grandma says. That's what grandpa says. Yeah, my whole family gets together on Easter because he has risen. But there's one thing that he has risen... And it's another thing to receive that resurrected life. Amen. Amen. There's a whole different understanding that needs to take place with the thought, with the truthfulness that Christ has risen. God Almighty has risen, but we need to be the ones that receive that resurrected life. That is where each and every person that had draws breath must come to the understanding and yield to that he has risen. 2,000 years plus, God Almighty clothed himself, not in majesty, but in humility. He didn't clothe himself in majesty, he rather clothed himself in humility, where he put on the body of a man. All that God is, was hidden, not revealed in its fullness, but hidden in its fullness, in the confines of a man that down through the ages was called the Christ, the anointed one. Christ means Messiah. Christ means anointed one. The one that was designated to save mankind. The Christ, Jesus, meaning Savior. Jesus, the Christ, Christ Jesus, was sent forth for this one purpose and he understood it. To die for mankind. And we look at it and say, well, Christ had to, quote unquote, die for mankind. You see, ladies and gentlemen, saints of God, back in the days of Adam and Eve, something took place. God had told Adam, do not eat of this tree knowledge of good and evil. For in the day that you eat it, you will surely die. In that the adversary, the devil, the deceiver, the one who tries to keep people away from understanding truth, the one who opposes God because he wants to be like God, filled with envy, filled with pride, filled with deception, there's no truth in him, he's the father of lies, came to Eve and worked through into Adam with this thought, you will not die, you won't die. In other words, God lied to you. Because God said, you will surely die. The adversary, Satan, comes and says, no, you will not die. Rather, you will be like God. He lied. Now, if God is not just, if he doesn't bring forth what he said, what he said would be so, if he doesn't hold to the declaration, if he doesn't hold to that one small law, do not touch, if he doesn't hold to and deliver death as he said, then he proves Satan true. Does that make sense? He instead has to hold to the law and the punishment that he declared in order to protect and preserve his holiness and therefore his justice. He has to be just. He has to bring forth the death sentence. He's been forced into that the declaration of consequence must come. Anyone who has raised children and said, do not, and yet they do, and you don't bring forth the punishment, you can bet on this one thing, it's going to happen again. Yeah. <laughs> and again. And again. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Right? ETC dot, etc., etc., etc. It's just going to keep on going until finally someone 
takes a stand and says no, 10, 9, 8, 7. When does the child move? At 10? 9? 7? 5? One and maybe even a fraction thereof. <laughs> Push it to the extreme. But when the consequence comes, they mean business. I have had it. All right. I have finally had it. If you do it one more time, I'm telling you, that's it. Right? <laughs> but until that child knows that you have really reached it, and they have learned your modus operandi, they'll carry it right to the extent. In this, God, to protect His holiness and His justice, had to bring forth this message. He had to declare a law and then he had to hold to the consequences thereof. You will surely die because if they didn't, it means Satan was telling the truth all along. So the death sentence came and has come. And ladies and gentlemen, saints of God, it's all around us. What's the two things that everyone always fools around with and says that you'll always can experience and count on in this life? Death and taxes. <laughs> all right? Death and taxes. Death is everywhere. You probably saw a hint of it just on your way in this morning. Did anybody see a cemetery? Did anybody see something on the side of the road? It's, it's all around us. We've become so accustomed to it that it's almost natural. It's normal. The smell of it is everywhere. And it's, we've become accustomed to it, yet that's not the way it's supposed to be and will be. Death sentence has been paid for. The death sentence came forth and has been paid for and he set up a foundation of faith and says anyone who will turn towards God, take a step, repent of, change their ways, move towards God, he will be there for them. He is Jesus, which means Savior. Save us from Death. Death no longer has to have final dominion on your life. You no longer have to fear death. Personally, Gary Cody does no longer fear death. Like what's going to happen. I don't and want to enjoy, I don't want to get there. I'm not looking forward to the quote unquote process. I know when my Dad was coming to his latter days and my mom turned to him and said, Henry, why are you so afraid? He goes, I'm not afraid of dying. It's the getting there. <laughs> it was the getting there. And I remember putting my hand on his head as he laid in bed on a coma. And I put my hand on his head and I turned down low and spoke into his ear. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release you into his hands. And he died that night. Jesus saves. From what? Gee, if he would just make things a little easier for me in this life. Gee, if he would just come and kind of unlock a few doors and close a few doors and help me out a little bit here and there. Can't he just put a little bit extra in the pocket? And yeah, I'd be happy with him. I've got a 99 car, I'd like a 2001. Gee, if I just keep, if, if you really loved me, you'd show me. No, he showed you he loved you. For while you were yet sinners, Christ died for you. He's not here to just fill our pockets. He's to take you out of this world and put you into his. Eternal life. Not eternal separation or death. God Almighty has walked into your presence. And is ready to receive you into his dominion. Holy and just and right and perfect. Is it a struggle? Yes. He himself said, difficult is the way. But worth it is the way. Amen. Worth it. How many things people apply themselves to today for that which is perishing? And will struggle and strive. How many people have struggled and strived just to get to and risk their life just to get to the top of Mount Everest? 
will risk life and limb and even the tip of their nose just to try to get there. Just to be able to tell everyone else what? I did it. You didn't. It was worth it. I got there and I saw. Ladies and gentlemen, when you step into, you'll realize it was all worth it. Worth it. Because he's worth it. And he has put the deposit into our lives called the Holy Spirit. That bears witness to your spirit that you will one day see him. Many people will even attest and say, yes, we realize that Christ has risen. But rather than asking for this life, they're assuming they've got it. They're living their life by assumption rather than asking. Many people are living their lives trying to fulfill some sort of requirement. That if I just get to, if I just fulfill, if I just, if I come to church every day and I always bring my Bible. Some people are living their whole lives by just twirling some beads. Some people are just looking and saying, if I light the candle, if I just do this, if I just do it. Trying to fulfill some self-imposed requirement in order to get to the point where God will receive them. I tell you today, God has received you. The question is, have you received Him? It's not by requirement, it's by receiving. It's already been handed out. But the gift of life, of eternal life, happens to be given with nail-pierced hands. With this simple request, follow me. Follow me. I will make you into men and women of God. That doesn't mean I just agree with him. It means he will make you into men and women birthed by the very seed of God. The Bible just simply calls it born again. A new creation comes forth. The old has passed away. Yeah, but no. The old has passed away. And the new comes forth and, and, and burst forth. In the Gospel of John, chapter 10, Jesus said, I lay down my life for you. That's what he said. Jesus said in his gospel, Jesus talking to his disciples said, I lay down my life for the sheep. Look if you would to John chapter 10 verse 15 if you have your Bibles. If not, let me read it to you. John chapter 10. Verse 15. John chapter 10. Verse 15. He says. As the Father knows me. Even, even so I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. But in the very verse before that. Verse 14. He says. I am the good shepherd. And I know my sheep. And am known by my own. His sheep. He's a flock. He's the good shepherd. Says his sheep hear his voice. And as the good shepherd. He says I lay down my life. For you. It's up to us to receive. That life. And to receive it means. He's going to do something in your life. He's a dynamic. All all-powerful God who when he comes into your life of disobedience he's going to do what start fashioning obedience when he comes into our life of sin where we're used to lying and deception and cowering and fear and insecurity and inadequacy and inferiority when we're covered with all kinds of coping mechanisms and we're filled with impurities and wandering eyes when we're looking all for the things of this world and we're consumed with ourselves and we're plagued with heartburn day in and day out, he steps into our life and starts unraveling the matrix of sin. He starts straightening things out. He starts bringing things into clarity. He starts giving you a new vision. He starts making the blind so that they will see. He starts unraveling things so that the poor can say that they're rich knowing what they're walking with and into. Those who walking in death and darkness, he brings light and life. 
Those who served the Lord who was a taskmaster, he becomes the Lord of their life as a friend. This Savior saves our souls. And today, though, many people are walking with just simple indifference. Who cares? Oh, God forbid that who cares would dominate your life or my life. Because He cares. And fear of death is all around. And yet He has offered a nail-pierced hand for anyone who will receive Him. It's for us to receive. I lay down my life for the sheep. He then says, verse 18, No one takes it from me. No one took his life from him. Rather, he says, I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down and I have the power to take it up. Why? Because he's God. He's God in the flesh who took his glory and his majesty and clothed it in humility. Gave his life. He didn't just come to earth and then just ascend. Where would be the resurrection? You can't have resurrection unless you first have what? Death. Had he come and taught everybody, okay, here are the rules. This is what you must follow just to prove to you that I'm God. Boom, 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 boom. There are the miracles. <gasps> I'm astonished. Here's the teaching. Boom, 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 boom. Follow these. I'll see you later. Cool. He instead submitted to the ultimate punishment, death. The ultimate humility, death. God Almighty suffered the consequences of death so that there would be a resurrection. It wasn't simply incarnation to ascension. The process was death and resurrection to ascension. With the promise, I will come again. To receive you to myself. I lay my life down for you. To who? For my sheep. The ones who hear my voice. And he says, and I will come again. For who? For those who hear my voice. Even in this small room, there could be people who are not hearing his voice. As though I'm sharing just my own opinion. As though some man is standing here just declaring something he's thought of. But I declare the truth to you today. That Christ Almighty has come and laid down his life that we might have life and never everlasting. That God Almighty suffered the humility of death. The contempt of death. Where devils and demons rebuked him and reviled him. And spit upon him and bull, pulled out his beard. And, 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 and he suffered the stripes and the cross and the flowing of blood. For this one purpose. That you and I might have life. Amen. And it's for us to receive. Let me share a story with you. A little girl whose parents had died lived with her grandmother and slept in the upstairs bedroom. Lost her parents. Lived in an upstairs bedroom. Grandmother on the first floor. One night there was a fire in the house. Grandmother tried to save the little child up in the upstairs bedroom but died trying to get there. The little girl was alone in the house Flames were roaring. She had no escape. She finds her way to an outside bedroom window. The fire started to spread. The first floor of the house was totally engulfed. The little girl comes to the, comes to the window. The neighbors see her and they call for help. They call for the fire department. But the fire department is busy at another fire and can't get there. In this, the neighbors see the flames and there's no way that they can get there. They can't go where she is. The little girl is in the upstairs window looking out, crying. Someone help me. Can't go to grandma. Mom and dad have already died. I'm cut off. I have no one. 
The neighbors are just staring and looking. They can't help. We've called for help. Help has not yet come. They're fighting another fire. Suddenly, a man comes out. He's got a ladder. He puts it up against the building. He climbs up the ladder. The little girl, he hops inside of the bedroom, inside the window, and he gets inside there. Few minutes pass by. All of a sudden, he's got the little girl coming to the window. And he puts her around and holds her in one hand and he climbs down the ladder. He gives, gives the child, little girl, to the crowd who received her. And then he takes off just as quickly as he came. No one knew who it was. He disappeared into the night. An investigation took place and revealed that the child had no living relatives. She was an orphan. No one to help her. No one to go to. So they had a special town hall meeting with the chief administrator of the court there to try to determine what to do for this little child. What are we going to do? Where is she going to go? Who's going to bring her up? Where is going to be her home? What home will she belong to? Who will raise this little child? In the town meeting, a few people started speaking up. First one was a teacher. The teacher said, I can instruct her. I can educate her. I'll show her how to conduct herself. She'll be smart, be able to go to college. She'll be a success. A farmer all of a sudden stood up in the town meeting and said, I'll take her. I'll teach her how to work. She'll have a good farm life, good wholesome living. I'll show her how to work hard and be a success. A wealthy man stood up. And the wealthy man said, you all know I've got plenty of money. And I can give her all the things that they said and more. I'm wealthy, and I'm the only one who can take care of her the way she should. I'll take her. The little girl just had her head down the whole time, not saying a word. Just a young gal with no living relatives whatsoever. Cut off from all she knew. People saying, I'll train her, I'll take her, I'll give her a home. But she said nothing, just her head down. All of a sudden in the back, a man stood up and he started walking towards the little girl as she sat in front. And he had a slow gait, slow walk, somewhat painful. And he made his way to the little child and he threw out his arms. And they're all covered with scars. And she looks up at the man, fully scarred, and the people went, <gasps> aghast at the scars of the hands and the arms and the shoulders. And the little girl just started to beam and said, this is the man who saved me. And she threw herself into his arms and he embraced her. And the chief administrator stood up and said, this meeting is over. Receiving the one who saved you. There's a nail-pierced, scarred man named Jesus who climbed where no one else could go and saved where no one else could save. And he embraced you and brought you to safety. Will you and I throw our lives into his scarred hands and say, I belong to you. You're my home. This little girl brought up by a man who proved his care for her. It goes beyond saying it. He did it. I will give her. I will help her. I will teach her. He saved her. He risked his life and he's got the scars to prove it. Jesus gave his life and has the scars to prove it. Paul himself said that when he enters into eternal bliss... He's got the scars to prove that he served the Lord. He lived the life. This is what Jesus has for you and I today. Nail-pierced hands, 
extending life for any person who will just wrap their arms and throw themselves. It doesn't matter what everybody else said. It doesn't matter what everybody else is offering. And there are a lot of offers out there today. Just look at your TV. You'll find all kinds of offers who want to make you theirs. All kinds of mail comes in. All kinds of email comes in. All kinds of friends. All kinds of family. All kinds of acquaintances. All kinds of endeavors trying to make you theirs. All kinds of philosophies. All kinds of worldviews. All kinds of opinions. But there's only one who can prove his love for you. All you and I have to do. This is the message. Receive his resurrection life. And realize that he will turn darkness into light. He will turn impurity into purity. He will turn death into life. He'll put a beam in your eye like nobody else can give you. You won't walk like this anymore. You'll walk as that little girl with a beam in your face knowing that you have found and he has found the one you've always wanted. Jesus has risen and he loves you today. This is the message. It's so simple. Jesus' message is so simple. If you're saying, yes, I receive and I want the life of Christ in my heart and in my life. I want change. I want power. I want God's power to work in my life. I need to trust him. Many people don't trust him. Faith, trust, and he always proves himself true. Amen. Don't believe the lie. Believe the truth. Each and every person in this room, whether you've accepted the Lord or you haven't, if that's what you want, just wave your hand to the Lord so everybody else can see it. I attest. I want the resurrection life. Each and every person, and let everybody see it. Make sure people see it. Now, I'm right here. We want to make sure people see it. That's me. I want it. I want God in my life. I don't, want, I don't want anything but God. I want the resurrection life. And you're waving it before angels. You're waving it before the throne room of God. You're waving it before God saying, yes, that's me. I want the resurrection life. Amen? Amen. That's what we're looking for. That's what you attest. We want God. It's just simply waving before him. Lord, fill me with your love. God will move upon you and change you as you step towards him. Remember that little girl. She didn't check with the teacher. Is it okay? She didn't check with the wealthy man. Is that okay? She didn't check with the farmer. Is that okay? She didn't even check with the boss man, chief administrator. Is that okay? She just leapt. It's okay. This is the man who saved me. Amen? Amen? Would you stand before your king and before your Lord who loves you today? Saints of God, happy Easter. Amen. It truly is a happy Easter. Amen. Good news. Good news. Amen. Father in heaven, we love you today. We're looking to see the resurrection power operate in our lives. We receive it, Lord. You saw, Lord, the simple movement of the hand waved in heaven. Seems so silly, Lord. Yet that's where the power is, saying yes to God. Yes to Jesus. Yes to your power. Yes to your resurrection. We understand, Lord, that resurrection is built off of death, which means, Lord, that we have to die that we might live. We understand, Lord. Do we want it? No, everything in us says no, but yet everything in us says yes. We want to receive the resurrection life of Jesus. Lord, unstop the ears that aren't hearing. Lord, soften our hearts that your love would have its way in our lives. Move upon our minds and give us the clear vision that walks in your light. And fill us and lead us in your holiness. For without holiness, no one will see God. Jesus, now I pray for a capstone of all that was said and done. That nothing will be lost, no seed will be trampled, and that people will walk in the purity and the love of God. 
Help us, Lord, to be a church who loves God and loves one another. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Have a great Easter. And let Easter work in your life.